Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns of Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're going to be talking about the spell Prismatic Wall. All right. Here's what I'm thinking happened. The the D and D creator people said, "We got a lot of wall spells. We need something that's going to justify a ninth level wall spell. What do you got?" And how about one that does everything? And uh, right, there was a large of? applause everywhere. That guy got a promotion. Yeah. Like it was a whole <laughs> ordeal. What do you think about this spell? I think for ninth level, this is asking a lot. Um, I think there will be some neat scenarios where you'll be against things that will have to move through it. If things don't have to move through it, though, it is just a wall. So that yeah, it feels like our, we'll get into it, but the duration of 10 minutes, it feels like wall of wait 10 minutes. Yeah, this is like basically full of invulnerability that also blinds things right like that's what a lot of creatures will treat this as because you'll stick it down and they'll go and then they'll wait and they'll tap their foot and they'll check their watch and they'll wait and then it'll disappear and they'll be like all right now we can fight you uh is what i envision happening more often than not yeah well let's get into it what uh what does the spell do okay Ninth level one action, 60 foot range. You can put it with anywhere at 60 feet of you. You get, uh, for 10 minutes, no concentration, notably. That's huge. Um, you get a big wall that is 90, up to 90 feet long and 30 feet high with an inch of thickness. Um, or you get a sphere of 30 foot diameter, like a big old ball of it. So you can hypothetically like, stick 30 feet diameter or 30 feet uh, yeah, diameter worth of things inside this wall and make them suffer because then they're just perhaps being blinded from all sides and never having a good time. Uh, the wall sheds bright light into a range of 100 feet and dim light additional 100 feet. So it's like a gigantic neon bright beacon. Uh, things within that range or start their turn within 20 feet of it. I'm sorry, 20 feet of it on 100 feet. Make a con save or are blinded for a minute. And that just continually happens. So if they're ever within 20 feet of this, they make a con save. And if they fail, blinded for a whole minute. And that minute, like, you know, they keep making the saves. They're in 20 feet of it. So that minute can just extend onward for however long the spell lasts. Um, next, because the spell is a book, um, there are seven layers of this spell. Each time someone tries to pass, the, pass through the, la- the wall, it does so one later time. And remember, this thing's only like an inch thick. So it's seven wall layers within an inch of each other. But it's right. just like pass, 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 and then probably dead before it gets to the other side. Um, additionally, um, as it passes through each layer, it makes a deck save or affected by the layer. The wall cannot be destroyed. It just says that. Uh, also, or sorry, it can be destroyed one layer at a time in order for the red to violate. Reading things correctly. Grammar, it's hard. Um, by means of specific to each layer. So once a layer is destroyed, it's destroyed for the uh, duration. Any magic field doesn't affect it. The spell magic only affects the violet layer. Which one's the violet layer, you may be asking, uh, viewers at home? Well, it's the seventh one but there are six more to go before it. Uh, basically, the gist of all the layers is they do some amount of damage. Uh, the first four, red, orange, yellow, and green. Um, oh, sorry, first five, including blue. Going through it gives you a 10d6 damage on a uh, failed save and half on a success. So if you try and go through this thing and you don't break any of the layers, you're looking at 50 d- 50d6 damage, which is a lot. That kills you. That is better than Meteor Rain. That hits like a bus. So if something <laughs> has to go through this, it's probably dead. Um, then the last two layers, Indigo, a failed save results in the creature being restrained. And then if it makes the save again at the end of each of its turns, and if it fails three in a row, it's petrified forever. That just kind of kills it. And finally, Violet uh, is it's blinded. Um, and at, at, if it fails the save, it's transported to another plane of the DM's discretion and isn't blinded. Um, so that's nifty. It like Violet like, banishes things away. Now, additionally, all these spells have a way to destroy it. So red is destroyed by 25 cold damage. Orange is destroyed by a strong wind. Yellow is destroyed by 60 force damage. Green by pass wall or another wall shaping effect. Um, blue is 25 fire damage. Indigo is by a daylight or brighter spell. And violet is by a dispel magic or other spell that dispels magical effects. And notably, all that has to be done in order, um, which leaves the spell being like a, there's no realistic way any group of monsters is reasonably getting through this. But there, with some clever players and some high level wizards, this can be a pretty nifty little damage puzzle to solve where it's like, we are on a really tight timeline. We don't have 10 minutes. We have to figure out how to break through this wall of, or prismatic wall. And if they didn't do their research and read ahead of time into the book and be like, oh, what do all the spells do? This might be a little like trial and error puzzle of trying to figure out, well, what would break the red wall? 
Uh, and then, you know, they would try out a bunch of things until eventually figure out, oh, does fire damage when we touch it? Let's try cold damage. And then cold damage might turn it off. And they go, oh, cool. Next layer of a, a layer. And you like break through it that way. It's a lot. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. You said the last layer, the violet layer. Yes. That, that will restrain. Indigo restrains. Oh. Violet blinds, and then if they are blinded, they make a whiz save at the start of your next turn, and on a failed save, they're shown to do a different plan of existence. Okay. So the, are we talking about the Petrified Layer 6? I think so. I, I don't know. I, I kind of blurred through the last of what you said, but uh, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Indigo Layer. The Indigo Layer. Straining Layer is what I'm concerned with. Let's say you, just, you got a bunch of hit points. You're feeling <laughs> lucky. You, you charge at it. Do, 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 do. Yep. You go through there. You get restrained. Next turn, do you take all that damage again? Because only the first part of you is touching the indigo layer and everything else is within all those other layers? I mean, so the way I'm reading this, if I'm reading this correctly, it is only an inch thick. So, yes. yes. <laughs> I can't <laughs> fathom there being a way where you're only within an inch touching the indigo layer. So like, if you get restrained by it, you're just kind of stuck in it and then are taking 56, 50d6 ish damage around, depending on your saves. But because you're restrained, you auto fail or you have disadvantage on deck saves. So you have disadvantage on all those saves again. It just seems like a death sentence, frankly. Yeah. I mean, it is to begin with. Yeah. You'll die long before you get petrified. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, that was my fun question. Yeah. Um, all right, Nate. You as a as a as a spell caster, when do you when do you when do you cast this? Whenever things have to get to you, whenever you are in a position where you're like, all right, time is on our side. We just need to hold out a certain amount of time. I'm going to create the biggest damaging wall you've ever seen, and if you want to deal with us, you have to do so either within ten minutes. Um, through the wall, or you have to break it down manually. Um, and that's going to take time. So this is well, it's either buying you time or meat grindering huge creatures. Like 50d6 damage. I mean, I'm going to pull out the dice calculator for this one. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot. Like this, this spell is doing hundreds of damage each round. Let me, let's see. 50d6. Average is 175 damage on, a, on all failed saves. So realistically, we're looking at lower than that. Some saves are going to get passed. You're taking hundreds of damage each round that you're taking damage from this thing. So even big things, they're talking about like four or 500 hit points, forcing their way through this or taking a huge chunk of their HP to do so, which is good. It might be like, okay, ancient dragons, there's several of you. Well, I'm going to just shave off a quick 300 to 500 HP from this encounter by putting this wall down. They're not going to have the, the patience to break through it. Maybe they break like the first wall layer and then go, well, screw it dive head through it first uh through it take 40 cd6 damage instead and you're still pretty happy and that's assuming they pass the restraining conditions and all that stuff maybe they legendary resistance through some of the specific layers at the end of the day this is a way to say you're taking a bunch of damage if you need to get here and when i say a bunch of damage i mean a huge chunk of damage otherwise meh if you ever need to get to them pretty bad you can only trap people in a bubble for 10 minutes so it's kind of like a removal spell to be like yeah i'm gonna cease have you cease to exist for a little while because there's no world where you need to move through it um, this can be a little effect where it's like hold specific monsters at bay while we go deal with other monsters. Um, it is definitely the kind of spell that has the area that you do have to be in a fairly closed environment or the wall will be able to be like, I'll just go around it or over it. And then you're like, oh, that was an option, huh? Whoops. Um, so you definitely need to care about the environment you're in, like most wall spells. This one also is a little bit more inflexible with its, its sizing. It would be great if you do panels of it, but you can't. So you have to always have a 90 foot long, 30 foot high or 30 foot diameter sphere, um, which is iffy. Um, you can put yourself in a 30 foot diameter sphere if you're okay being surrounded by brilliant flashing neon lights and then just have things coming at you really suffer for it. So again, if you're trying to like time is against them, the, the world's gonna explode and everyone else is gonna die except you in 30 minutes and 10 minutes. Sure, throw this down. Uh, those are like the best case uses I can see for it. I think most yeah. of the time that's fairly niche. How often are any of these cases happening though? I think the the time is on your side or creatures are, are going to feel like they have to get to you won't necessarily, it may be like a once a campaign kind of thing. I think that at that tier of play, I would like to throw encounters at players at least where like, again, I like the alternate 
of outside of just kill or be killed encounters encounters that have goals so if your goal is to defend something if your goal is to hold the line if you're in a position where you are get to play defensively walls are better when you're playing defensively when things have to interact with it it's great if you're ever in like a standstill with another archmage they can just wait this out most things can just wait this out if you're in that kind of position so there's not like a particularly large emphasis on that but if you're in a more dynamic encounters you're playing against encounters that there are huge swarms of enemies spawning from the side and they're like they skirt at cr 13 or whatever throwing down a prismatic wall is going to just deal with that problem and that's nice to have being able to say okay you are under 150 hit points, you're not getting through this. And just sticking it in, clogging off the storm giant path and letting, fighting the other directional stuff that's coming at you. And I think that, again, most tables aren't going to have that. A lot of tables aren't going to be thinking about the video game design encounter kind of line of thought that I like to I think of it as, where it's like I'm trying to build encounters like you would fight levels in a video game where you have different objectives and there's different routes to take and you have different options as far as how do I navigate this environment with these complex toolkits, as opposed to just fighting high CR monsters and higher CR environments, which tends to be what higher level Dungeons and Dragons looks like at most tables. All right, one more question. Um, now, if you throw a creature or push a creature into the wall, does they have it a bad time. The layers, huh? They have a bad time, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the first layer doesn't stop them. They... Um, as it passes or reaches through each layer. So if it's passing through it, I mean, the wall doesn't stop it until it restrains it, oh, is how yeah. I would rule it. So I would go with, yeah, you can throw things through this and have them just get eviscerated, which is definitely a better thing to be doing as a fighter or barbarian at this tier of play than taking regular attack action. 50 D6 damage is way above what you're doing with a single great sword hit. You know, you know what this might pair well with. Hmm. A grasping vine. It could. Uh, I guess, because the grasping vine can go through it, I suppose, and then just yoink things. Sure, I guess. Yeah, that's going to kind of DM really. Yeah, agreed. Very, very strong vine. If, we're, if you need a ninth level spell to make grasping vine good, maybe grasping vine isn't <laughs> that good. <laughs> but, uh, any other kind of, you know, just the wind or something, you know? That's, uh, I guess, the best. Yeah, I was ready to not give this one a good rating, but uh, just having it there to throw people at is uh, pretty good. It's decent. I mean, you are in the problem where, like, you have to get them in range of it, and they don't want to start within 20 feet of it because it blinds them anyway. So things are going to, it's going to, you're going to have a harder time getting things next to this wall. A lot of other walls, they are like, yeah, I can be within five feet of this. What do I give a shit? It doesn't touch me when I'm there. This has well, a negative thing, effect. You, so they're going to try not to get there, it. right? You cast it in a place where a bunch of people are. Yeah. And then you just run and start pushing and throwing and shoving and stuff. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, I think that that is the floor on this. And that floor is fine. 50 D6 damage is enough that I'm like, yep, this is worth a ninth level slot. Um, and the weird puzzly element, monsters never to care about, but players might. So that's a neat little DM tool option. I think the spell walks that very fine line of being both a great DM option for a completely different reason, as well as being a great player option. It's good that that exists. I like these kinds of things for that reason. Um, I don't know if you need it on your character sheets or anyone needs it on their character sheet, frankly. This is a wizard-only spell. Uh, there's more powerful wizard ninth level spells than this. This is a very fair ninth level spell for a wizard. It's a cool one at that. So if you like the walls, if you're here to play the wall mage, this is your finale, and it's a good finale. Yeah. All right. You got a score for this one? I think this is a perfectly fine three. This is a very average... This is where I want my ninth level spells to be. It's a yeah. cool, big, powerful effect. Doesn't warp every single encounter. Doesn't wish things into existence or out of existence kind of stuff. Yeah, I was going to go with a two, but uh, yeah, now that I thought about actually like forcing creatures into the wall. Yeah, because I was thinking before, uh, how many situations are there going to be where they're not just going to wait 10 minutes? But no, yeah. I do think you'd be surprised because a lot of upper tier play tends to do time sensitive world exploding kind of events. Yeah. There is often an opportunity and like an enforcement to act. So, and often just like saying you can't get here for 10 minutes while I throw shit at you from the side of this wall is pretty good. Yeah. All right. Uh, I will agree with your three. And uh, that was Prismatic Wall. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.